Hey, future respiratory therapist. So tonight I got a topic here for you that I want to talk about that comes from actually a request that I received to talk about in PPV. And so I'm going to get into the specifics of the request, but before I get in there, I just want to talk about when you see the word in PPV, you're talking about non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Okay, now this can be one of two different things. This can be either BiPAP or CPAP. Okay, and you got to understand that both of these are forms of non of of in PPV. Okay, now CPAP does not provide any ventilatory support, and when I say ventilatory, I'm talking about the altering of tidal volumes or altering of minute ventilation that remove that leads to the removal of CO2. CPAP is just a consistent, constant positive airway pressure or continuous positive airway pressure that enhances and promotes oxygenation, okay? So when you're thinking about CPAP, you're just thinking about oxygenation. You're not gonna affect anybody's ventilatory drive to aid them in removing CO2. So this is important to understand because if you have a patient that has an acidotic blood gas, you need to not be thinking CPAP. If you have a patient who has a blood gas that shows a normal uh, acid base balance, but moderate, moderate or mild to moderate oxygenation issues, then you should probably consider some form of CPAP to help improve their oxygenation status. Okay, so in PPV with the patient who needs ventilatory support aid in helping to remove co2 now you're going to be talking about bipap okay and when you talk about bipap you have to talk about two settings you have to understand ipap and you have to understand epap okay now this seems real simple because what you will hear people say is that when you think about epap think cpap and think peep and that's right, okay? EPAP is your, is your function that will, will maintain a constant expiratory pressure. It will increase mean airway pressure. It will lead to an increase in FRC and aid your oxygenation, okay? So EPAP, think CPAP and PEEP. But when people say IPAP, some people tend to think IPAP is the same as pressure support but it's not, okay? And that's the biggest thing you need to understand about non-invasive positive pressure ventilation in relationship to BiPAP is that your IPAP is going to be your inspiratory pressure level setting. Now your pressure support is going to be the difference between your IPAP and your EPAP, okay? Does that make sense? So, so you've got an EPAP setting of say five and you have an IPAP setting of say 15, then you need to think about your pressure support as being the difference. So IPAP of 15, EPAP of five, you have a pressure support of 10, okay? And that's what's going to drive your CO2 removal, okay? Now I want to take this specifically down the pathway of BiPAP and how to make BiPAP changes in conjunction with specific ABG results, okay? So I'm gonna take this off the board here, what I've got right here. And I'm gonna put on the board a BiPAP setting with an IPAP and an EPAP, and the IPAP is, like I said a minute ago, let's just go 15 over five, okay? So let's just go with this, okay? So you're looking at 15 over five, and you have a blood gas result that shows this. This is pH, this is CO2, your O2 is 60, 
and your bicarb is 23. Okay? So this is our ABG that we have for this patient on 15 over 5. Okay? Now what you need to look at is that blood gas and tell me what the problem is. Well, you obviously do not have a ventilation problem because your pH is normal, your CO2 is normal, and obviously your bicarb is norm normal also, right? So do you have a ventilation problem? And the answer is no. A ventilation problem would present itself with an increase in CO2 and a decrease in your pH. But that's not what we have here. We just have normal pH with normal CO2. There's no ventilation problem. So what do we need to address? We need to address the oxygenation problem, right? That's it. We have a patient here who's mildly, borderline, moderately hypoxemic, and we need to make a change on our BiPAP to fix this, okay? And so remember, your oxygenation settings on your BiPAPs or your non-invasive positive pressure ventilation is your EPAP. EPAP. So EPAP, CPAP, PEEP. Those all go with oxygenation issues. So for this patient, we need to increase EPAP. Okay? So we're going to come over here and we're going to say, okay, let's just increase our EPAP to 10. Okay? And that will improve our oxygenation. And you're correct. The problem is, is that if you only change EPAP to 10, then you're going to alter your pressure support setting. So if you think about the difference between these two, the difference right now is 10. And this is your pressure support. And your pressure support is what is driving your CO2 level. Okay? And your overall work of breathing for your patient. And so if we increase EPAP to 10 and we leave IPAP at 15, then you need to recognize that pressure support is going to go down to five. And that is going to result in a greater workload on your patient's side of things, which could lead to an increase in your CO2. We don't want that, right? So what we want is to keep our pressure support because that's what's driving our ventilatory mechanism. Okay, That's what's got our patient breathing comfortably and it's got our CO2 at the right level. So we need to keep our pressure support where it is. So if we increase our EPAP to 10, then we must, in order to keep our pressure support at the same level, we must increase our IPAP to 20. Now the difference here stays 10. And our ventilation remains the same while our oxygenation should improve. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so let's do another one here. I'm going to erase just some of the numbers here. So, we have, I'm going to stay with 15 over 5. And now we have this blood gas. 7.31 CO2. 51, O2, 84, and bicarb, 24. Okay, so we got 15 over 5, we draw a blood gas, and we get 7, 3, 1, 51, 84, and 24 for our blood gas. Now, your first thing you have to do is ask yourself, what's the problem? Okay, when I look at my blood gas, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, is this right here. You have an acidotic pH due to an increasing CO2. So how do we fix this? That's the next question. Okay. What do we do to fix this? How do we increase our minute ventilation to get our CO2 down to a normal range? And the answer is simply this. Understand this. Do we have an oxygenation problem? No. So keep your, keep your EPAP the same. Okay? If your EPAP stays the same and you need to increase minute ventilation, 
then you have to do that by increasing pressure support. Your pressure support right now is 10. Okay? Now, if we increase pressure support to 15 and we're starting at 5, then we need to increase our IPAP to 20. Now, our pressure support is 15. This should increase minute ventilation, which would drive this CO2 down and drive our pH back up. Okay? So, a ventilation issue, you have to increase your pressure support. An oxygenation issue, keep your pressure support the same. You still will probably have to move your IPAP, but you'll have to move it congruently to the same factor that you change your EPAP. Does that make sense? Okay. If it doesn't, put a comment in the comments because I want to I want to clarify this. I want to help you guys with this. Okay. And so here we are right now. So let's do another one. All right. So pH we have. 7.36 CO2 we have 44 O2 we have 51 bicarb we have 24 we're on 18 over 8 okay look at your blood gas tell me what the problem is the problem is in your mind when you look at that you should say okay I have a normal pH I have a normal CO2 doesn't mean they're not getting out of range, but right now they're normal. And we have a moderately hypoxemic patient with a 51 PaO2. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to address our oxygenation. So we know we're going to be increasing EPAP. So we're going to take this up. Let's just take it up to 12. Now, the question is this. Do we need to change ventilation or not? Our CO2 is 44. So the patient currently right now is good with our pressure support of 10. And so all we need to do is keep our pressure support the same. And if we do that, then we will move our IPAP up conjunctively. By the same four we moved EPAP, we'll move it up to 22. Okay? Make sense? All right. So kind of went back to the first episode. I just want to throw it back in there just to refresh you on it, okay? So last one, and we'll show you what this one looks like. And then I'm going to leave it to you to tell me your questions, okay? Because if you send me more questions, I can make more videos specific to your questions. But right now, I feel like I'm covering this the best I can because I don't know what your understanding or lack of understanding is. So let's do a let's do a pH of 7.51 and a CO2 of 30 and a PaO2 of 95 and a bicarb of 24. Okay? Now you may notice that all my bicarbs have been 24 because if you're talking about when you're talking about non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, you're not typically going to be talking about metabolic disturbances okay you're gonna be talking about either oxygenation issues or ventilation issues that you're trying to keep off the ventilator or prevent reintubation okay so here we go what's the problem oh i'm sorry let me give you your bipap settings your bipap settings are 20 over 8 so you have an ipap of 20 and an epap of 8 okay so what do we want to do to fix this patient well do we have an oxygenation problem? We're at 95. The answer is no. Do we have a ventilation problem? The answer is yes. Our patient is hyperventilating. Our patient is ventilating too much. Okay? So how do we fix somebody with a low CO2? We decrease their minute ventilation. In non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, how do we do that? We have to decrease their pressure support, okay? So what we have to do is realize that the difference between these two is 12, and we need to decrease that. So are we going to change our EPAP? No, because we don't have an oxygenation problem. So EPAP is going to stay at 8, okay? What we're going to do is decrease our pressure support. 
And let's just say we want to decrease our pressure support to eight, okay? So if we want to decrease it to eight, then we would drop our IPAP to 16 because eight plus eight is 16, okay? This results in a decrease in pressure support, which would decrease our tidal volume, which should decrease our minute ventilation, which should increase our CO2 and decrease our pH, okay? I don't know how else to do it for you guys. I don't know how many examples I can go through it. I need you to tell me another example. Give me something that you don't understand so that I can make you a video specific to what your question is, okay? Remember, if it's an oxygenation problem, you change EPAP and keep your pressure support difference the same. So you may have to change EPAP and IPAP. If it's a ventilation problem, you need to increase your pressure support. So you need to increase the difference between your IPAP and your EPAP. So you may just have to increase your IPAP. If it's just a ventilation problem and you need to decrease minute ventilation, then maybe you just need to decrease your IPAP. Okay? But you have to understand that the relationship between IPAP and EPAP equals pressure support and that's what's driving your CO2, okay? Leave me your questions, your comments, your concerns below. I'd love to address them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have a great night.